Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. He's my Savior, Savior, Savior. Jesus, 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 He's my Savior, Savior, He's my Savior, 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 He's my Savior, 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 I call Him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's my healer, healer, healer. Come on, let's just sing that today. Healer, healer, healer. Let's just comfort the family. Healer, healer, healer. Hey, call his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, let's say that again. Healer, 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 healer. He's my healer, healer, healer. Oh, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Call his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, call his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are Except the family, let's lift that up and just say, I, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I worship, I worship, and adore you. Just want to tell.
let's just say that again. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I worked the best.
Come on, clap your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God the praise today. Come on. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I need somebody in here that's going to bless the Lord today. I will bless the Lord Hallelujah. at all times. His praises. Hallelujah. His praises. His praises. His praises. Shall be continually oh, in my mouth. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Mighty, 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 mighty God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We give you the praise. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Go ahead and cry. Because we've been endured but for a night. But joy comes in the morning. How many of you believe in that promise today? That joy comes in the morning. We thank God today for this opportunity to share in this celebration of life for our dear sister, Sister Valerie Taylor. Come on, somebody give God praise. Brother Taylor's heart, Brother Taylor's love, Brother Taylor's baby doll, Brother Taylor's everything. Well done, Brother Taylor. Come on, y'all need to give him a hand. Come on, give him a hand. Thank you, Lord. Brother Taylor was with her all the time. All the time. And Sister Taylor was with him all the time. Wherever they went, they went together. He spent time with her, gave her time. Amen. And he loved her without any limits. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, y'all. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Call Brother Taylor. If he didn't answer, I knew where he was at. He was up at the nursing home, and he was there morning to night giving instruction to the staff how to take care of his wife. <laughs> and so we are grateful. We know that this is not easy. Um, this is not easy. My wife is my backup because you, some of you all know, I just went through this six weeks ago with my mom. And my dad is here today because they loved Brother Taylor so much. So much that he, he's here. 63 years. 63 years. And that, I, I told you Sunday that I've been in your place, so I understand. It's not easy. Don't ever let someone tell you that you should not cry, that you should not weep. Tell them to go mind their business while you mind your business. Somebody that has been an integral part of your life, has raised you, has birthed you, Tell God thank you. Tell God thank you. We are so happy to have all of those that are here with us on this afternoon. 
We ask that you pray for the family. Pray for Brother Taylor. We are grateful unto God for pastors that are here. Uh, Pastor Robert Tucker of the Light Church. Amen. No darkness. We want some light. The Light Church. And so we are grateful. We're always grateful for our leading lady, Reverend Karen Hardaway. Amen. For Lady Tucker. God bless you, Prophetess Tucker. Pastor Jones. There might be some that I've missed. Amen. Is, this, is Pastor Brinson here? Oh, you're right there. You and the family. You mixed right in real good, huh? You, just, you ain't want to be with us. You want to be with them. God bless your heart. All right, we're gonna have a celebration, are we not? Come on, church, we're gonna have a celebration. How many of you are gonna have a celebration today? How many of you are gonna give God the praise? How many of you are gonna tell the Lord, thank you? Come on, thank you! Thank you! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I'm gonna have church all by myself if y'all don't have church. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! to God in the highest. He's worthy to be great. Long life. 89 years of age. Somebody here ought to tell God, thank you. Glory to God. 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 Pastor Bertha Brinson will come with our prayer of comfort, Old Testament by Reverend Karen Hardaway, our New Testament by Pastor Robert J. Tucker, and then we will have a selection by our brother, Elder Malcolm Wilson, and um, his gathering, amen, amen. Oh, come on, let us say hallelujah. Oh, come on and bless the Lord. Come on, let the Lord know that he is the great redeemer. Come on, let him know that he is magnificent. Let him know that you love him, even in the midst of the hurt, in the midst of the pain. Even when we don't understand, he is still our God. He was always our God. Hallelujah. So we might as well go ahead and give God glory. Oh, I, listen, I had a short time with Grammy, but I know that she was alive, why, okay? So I just believe we came to celebrate our God on today. So if you don't mind, one more good time. Say hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you. And you're worthy to be praised, oh God. Oh yes, God. Woo! Oh God, oh my, yeah God. Oh God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of your son Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice, oh God. You gave us the best part of you, oh God, that we may have a life on this earth. Today, God, we come to celebrate one of your greatest. Lord, we thank you, we honor you, and we lift you up. Thank you for lending her to us. She was a vessel of honor, oh God, one of great wisdom, one that kept you laughing, oh God, one that reminded you you were beautiful, no matter what happened in your life, that you were still belonging to God. Father, we ask you to cover this family in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the pain. In the midnight hours, no, nobody's around to comfort that pain. We ask that you will step in. Lord, your word said you will heal us Heal the brokenhearted and you will bind up our wounds. Today, God, we're trusting you. We're leaning on you. Comfort Pop, oh God. Help him to know that he's not alone, but you will never leave him nor forsake her. Strengthen a net, oh God. Remind her that her mother is yet with her in her heart. 
Help her to remember all the love that she's poured into her. Lord, for every family member, near and far, we ask that you, oh God, will continue to show them, oh God, that you are faithful in all your ways. Lord, we thank you, oh God, because one day if we do it right, we'll get an opportunity to see her again. Oh God, and we'll get to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. But God, we're asking you right now, while we continue on this earth, give us the endurance, give us the strength, give us the power to know that you are faithful and all is well in our soul. Come on, one more good time, if you don't mind, tell the Lord that you love him and tell the Lord thank you. Our Old Testament scripture comes from Psalm 23. The word of the Lord reads on this wise. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God, you prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, surely. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord bless the reader and the hearer of his holy word. May the Lord bless you. The word of the Lord is found for the New Testament reading. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. 13th through the 18th verse and it reads but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another, one another. with these words. Yeah. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can the people of God say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. This is still the day that the Lord has made. And even in this, we will rejoice and be glad in this day. Psalms 27 simply says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I come to encourage the family on today. Family, you have nothing to fear. I know that um, pain and sorrow is gripping your heart and your spirit right now. But we just want to encourage your spirit on today and let you know, hallelujah, you have no reason to fear because the Lord is your light and your salvation. Just, just a simple song we want to do. It simply says, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Help me say, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear?
but I will wait on you. I will wait on you. But you tell me to renew my strength, Lord. I will try. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. I will try. Oh, yeah. Let's say that again. I will wait. I will wait on you. Sometimes it gets a little hard. Yeah.
thank you, God. Peace is like no other. Come on, help me say, peace like no other. And it reaches, reaches me. Can we just say right there? Say, reaches, reaches me. Yeah. Reaches, reaches. service calls for special remarks is, I don't know is that someone in particular or are we just opening up the floor open up the floor open up the floor all right we open up the floor y'all didn't have to tell me that they said it two minutes some of y'all, first sentence is going to be two minutes. And that first sentence is all you're going to say in two minutes. But we ask that you would come in respect of the family. And I'm sure that they would love to hear what you have to say. Amen. So we're going to ask that you come at this time. Those that desire to have remarks, amen. Those who desire to have remarks, amen. Hello, everybody. Yes. I'm Sister Helen Coleman, and Sister Valerie was my dear, dear friend. I thought of her as a big sister. And every Sunday, only a few Sundays that I miss, I would bring her a bag of candy. And after the pandemic was over, I didn't bring the candy in. So she said, Helen, where's my candy? <laughs> I said, well, I didn't know if I should bring it after uh, the pandemic. I didn't know. I just didn't bring it in. She said, well, you bring me my candy. So practically every Sunday, as Brother Bob could witness, I would have a bag of candy. And everybody would get candy, but I would always give her this bag first so she could get what she wanted. And then everybody else could get what was left. But this candy, Brother Taylor, I'm giving this bag of candy to you. In memories of my dear, dear friend, Sister Valerie. We ought to pray for this family. I ask God's continuous blessing upon each and every one of you, and we're going to be checking on you, make sure you're okay. And I know the grandsons, Cameron, Courtney, Ty, and the great grands. Hello. <laughs> So I just ask each and every one of you to continue to pray for the Taylor family, and God bless each and every one of you. Praise God, church. Praise God. My name, for some of you who don't know, is Vicki Hall. And I am the goddaughter. I asked Valerie if she would be my godmother. My mother didn't choose her. I loved her. I spent so much time with the family when I was young. And I asked her, and she said yes. And I loved her from the bottom of my heart. I moved away and I was out of the city for a long time. But I feel blessed that in the last three years we reconnected. And I'm most proud that she told me my pound cake was the best. <laughs> I, I just think she loved pound cake and I was blessed to learn. I practiced and got it right. 
and was able to take her a pound cake every now and then. And I thank God for that opportunity to show her some love. I ask that you continue to pray for the family, Slim, Annette, boys, grandchildren, everyone. I love you, and I'll be checking on him to make sure he's fine. I really do. I even tried to make a peach cobbler for him. I hope it turned out. <laughs> but I'm going to do the best I can to keep an eye on him. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, church. My name is Gregory Harris. And real quick, I just want to say something. I know the Taylors from way back in the 60s when they had the restaurant on Robinson Court. And I used to go in there, me and my kids' mother, we go in there, we wash our clothes, we get them hamburgers and them hot dogs, man. And I'm telling you, they smell so good, they taste so good. I'm tell I, I miss that, I really do. And I would come in there short some time where I would need something. Mr. said, come on, son, here, how much you got? And I said, yeah. He said, give me that. Go on and get what you got to get. I said, thank you, sir. And you told me something one day. This was last year. You said, you really respect me because I respect you. And I still have that in my heart. And I keep thinking about that all the time when you told me that. So I'm just letting you know, Mr. Taylor, I will always respect you and your family, your daughter, your grandkids, all of y'all. Everybody say amen. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to the family, to Robert Taylor and all his beautiful family. I just want to say my prayers are with you. I thank God for you and your wife. Because you know, every year when I have my family reunion, you and your wife would come and sit amongst our family. And I'm proud to say to you that you're just like a dad to me and a mom to me. And he's my neighbor. I live right down the street from him. And it was times when I was trying to catch that bus, trying to get to school. And I knew I couldn't make it. And I would stop at Mr. Taylor's house. And he'd be in that kitchen cooking up a storm. I tell you, that house be smelling good. And I'd be wanting to get some of that food that he had. He said, well, I cooked enough for me and my wife. But if you want a plate, I'll make you a plate. And then uh, he would just, you know, he set the food aside. And he would take me to the bus stop. And he was just so precious to me. And there was times when I would just come by and just sit and talk with him, you know. And I would say, you know, you, you both have such a beautiful relationship. Y'all look like two lovebirds. I said, I'm praying for a husband. I said, I want to marry just like y'all. And he said, well, you keep praying. And Valerie said, you a good woman. God going to bless you with a husband. She said, you just keep on praying. And so I just want to say that I love you all so very much. Y'all been such wonderful neighbors to me and you and your wife you're so beautiful and I'm, my prayers are with you thank you If y'all gonna come, make sure y'all come on and be on this side so we can do that. At least we know y'all got clean mics. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
Gammy was my Gammy for the last 10 years, I believe, when I joined the Newsome family and never left the house, as they say. She became my grandmother, and I loved that lady so much. Her hugs were the best. And one of my greatest memories is the day that we lost Pop Tony. She came to the church and she said, I was coming just for you. And she grabbed me in the car and hugged me and embraced me as if she had given birth to me herself. And I will forever, forever, forever love and cherish her. She was such a sweetheart. She was a great woman of God and one of the most beautiful ladies. I'm so grateful for the Taylor family. Papa was the best, I tell you. If I can be like him, I want a marriage that lasts 63 years and still love your wife the way that he did, the way he took care of her in the hospital, in the house. And anytime you see him, he takes good care of her. And even when we had to go and help her up the stairs, he made sure we helped her up the stairs correctly. <laughs> I love, I just love them and I'm praying for this family, for my brothers, all of us, that we all get through this. And I love you, mom. Everybody good, right? Everybody got corona or nothing? We all right? Okay. Uh, so, first off, my name is Nicholas. My, Joe's my brother, and these are all my brothers. Um, a lot of y'all might not know, but we were all brought up together. Um, not too far from this church and that house that was over there. Um, what was the address? 1319, right up the street, okay? So when I tell you we all grew up together, I mean um, Courtney's age grew up together. Ty was Courtney's age, grew up together. Running around with Power Ranger underwear on, like big bowls of cereal in the house grew up together, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell the story so everybody knows, okay? My mother, God rest her soul, and my auntie Nett, okay, was road dogs all together all the time. Pops and Gammy was like my grandparents. I loved them dearly, still love them to this day. We, listen, we was upstairs, all five of us, five boys around their age, upstairs playing, okay? Rough house and WWE all day, okay? I don't know how it happened. I don't remember what exactly happened, but we became ninjas. And we had bump beds, it was bump beds on each side of the room. Now why they would put bump beds on each side of the room is beyond me. But what ended up happening is Courtney and, who was it? Courtney and Joe were getting ready to, okay. No, I'm gonna tell them, okay. Listen, all I know, is Courtney go to dive and kick, and Joe went like this, and Courtney end up in the wall. Now, I don't mean like halfway in the wall. I mean like Auntie Nett coming up the stairs and Courtney sticking his head through the wall to look to see what's going on. Me and Cam, we the oldest ones, we dipped out and went in the side room. We already knew what was going down. That is my fondest memory, Christmas, sleeping downstairs, okay, with the Christmas tree that turned into the New Year's tree, that turned into the Valentine's Day tree, that turned into the Easter tree, that turned into the St. Patrick's tree, that turned into every tree. I am not telling, am I telling, am I, I'm not lying, I'm, I, I say this to say that I love these people like they are my own. There is nothing I would not do for this family and especially my brothers. And I just want to say we were blessed to be in the presence of such a great woman. And to Mr. Taylor, my heart goes out to you. 63 years of marriage. 
And I remember coming through and asking them, what was the secret? What, because I, I, I had to figure it out. Talk, communication, you listen. It's a give and take. And sometimes it's okay to be wrong. And we just gotta sit back. So thank you so much, people. God bless you. afternoon and I give all honor to God and just being here today even though it's not under the best circumstances um, my name is Kiana and I'm just here to represent the Buffalo family and I just want to tell cousin Robert and cousin Bell and y'all were so little the kids when we first met y'all remember being 17 and my fondest memory of cousin Bell and cousin Robert you can just feel the love and I've always taken the love that you've shared that even though I had only a little bit of it to see it just radiated so this past year when I got married me and my husband were just sitting down and we said we have to have cousin Val and cousin Robert and so to just to see them and just to represent 63 years so definitely you remain in my heart you remain in my prayers I can't even imagine what this day feels like um, but I just wanted to tell you give you your flowers and just let you know what you mean to us and what you mean to to our family and um, definitely me and my husband plan on coming out and making sure that we come to see you because I need you to counsel him <laughs> let him know because <laughs> we want to make it to 63 years and and just I, I love you all and um, again we're, we're we're here for you and we love you Gonna have two more. This is one. That's good. All right. Good afternoon. My name is James Allen from Pittsburgh, PA. I wouldn't have come up here if it were not for Valerie and Salem. They mean so much to me. In the 70s, my dad, my uncles made a pilgrimage from Pittsburgh to Canada to find family. Emily Dawson is my grandmother, my father's mother. And uh, that pilgrimage to here and to Canada helped me become a better man, a better father, and have a better understanding of how valuable family is. I couldn't believe my father was coming this far. Um, but he let me know, and he only made maybe two or three family reunions before he passed away. Um, but we continued that tradition. You know, somehow it got away from us. We need to start ramping it back up. Um, but Valerie meant so much to me. She was so warm. She was so kind. She was so gentle. She made me feel like family. You know, when you come from a foreign land, you know, into a new land, you know, you try to find out where you belong. And Robert and Valerie had no problem in making me feel welcome and part of family. They were telling me family that I had that I didn't even know. And um, our Pittsburgh family, our New Jersey family, we have family um, that extends their condolences from afar. And we're here to let you know that we love you. Thank you. Wow. 
while they're coming. You all are sure letting out a lot of secrets. <laughs> Stuff that we didn't know. You didn't know either? <laughs> My name is Kasia. Gammy became my Gammy when I was 13 years old. I just turned 43. I was very blessed to have her in my life. Hush. <laughs> kind of all we already was touched on about how open this family has been to so many others. And I'm gonna keep that tradition because I was a lost little girl and I'm gonna find another lost little girl and carry it on and give the same thing that Gammy gave to me. That's all. Amen. Good morning now, well, good afternoon now. So as you know, I'm the eldest. <clears throat> Gammy was my everything. As much as she was my grandmother, she was my mom. She raised me to be who I am today, between her and Pop. Although my mom was there, she, she worked a lot. She wasn't around as much as Gammy was, but Gammy was the constant. Pop worked, mom worked. Gammy was always there. When we left school, we never went home. We went to Gammy's house. And Gammy had a lot of grandkids. I can probably count 20 of them in here right now. Um, I felt it was important for me to get up here and stand tall because she was always so proud of us. She never, ever went anywhere without doting on us. She would speak as highly as she possibly could, like we could walk on water. Um, uh, my youngest brother, Ty, could not be here, so I wanted to get up and read the words that he left behind for her because it speaks accolades to who she was to all of us. Daughter, sister, wife, mother to us, Gammy giver of love, support, discipline, <laughs> and pocketbook candy. Butterscotch, peppermints, caramel cubes filled with the lint. <laughs> Strawberries with the filling, Werther's gold. We kissed them up to God, never asked how old. The answer was always, ain't no telling. You raise three boys to men and with minimal yelling. Brave be the one to ever walk or ever talk back. My gammy was the epitome of get the strap. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing soon after the laughs will be shook, cause there's another whooping to follow the ones we just took. <laughs> so we're left here to reminisce the times we left shook. Hard to endure, but sweet to recall like the candy from Grammy's, from Gammy's pocketbook. Gammy, I love and miss you. The lessons you taught and the memories, traditions you left will continuously be passed down. Love your baby boy, Ty Sr. Hey, everybody. I wasn't going to say anything. Um, I'm grateful for my Gammy. She gave me the greatest gift that I could ever thank God for. It's 
because of her that I'm so rooted and grounded in Jesus. At a young age, she introduced me to Jesus. It wasn't, it wasn't a, a option for me to um, do whatever it was in church. Like she would, when I wanted to quit doing things, she was like, "No, you're gonna do this." After after school, when we got home from school, we would be at Gammy's house, and she would have us in the Bible. She would have us open up that book. We would get in it. And before we could do anything, we couldn't go out and play. No, you're going to read these scriptures. You're going you're gonna to study a little bit, and then you can go out and play. So I'm grateful to God for giving me because she gave me Jesus. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't just get up here and just say thank you. Thank you, Pop, for standing so tall and so strong with her, for being the epitome of a husband for being the model that I could only aspire to be a, a, a fraction of the man you are. Amen. I thank you for loving Gammy the way you did. You were there for every step of the way. She never had to worry and she was okay. She was at peace leaving here because she knew that you were gonna be okay. We got you, we gonna hold you up. Whatever you need, don't hesitate to call. We're gonna be more intentional about being around. You don't have to worry. Thank you, that's it. Praise God. Come on, let's give them a hand again. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. 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 On behalf of the clergy, I've asked Pastor Robert Tucker to come give remarks. Um, prophetess, he said, you need to get up here with him. So come on up, make your way. He said, have my wife come up here. Amen. I, I just want y'all to know there's no greater couple than the Hardaways. Y'all come in second, all right? <laughs> come on up. Amen. This is a wonderful couple, and I praise God for their ministry in the city of Buffalo. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 I'm not really the talker. My wife is really the, she's good at this, so I'm going to let her. Say amen for her. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God some praise. I truly believe that Gammy would want us to give God some glory. I truly believe that Gammy would want us to bless the name of the Lord. Oh, for the name of the Lord is great. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. And this is still the day that he is made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Can we just give God some praise one more time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I did not have the opportunity to know Gammy that long. Amen. But the times that I had encountered her, what a beautiful saint. What a beautiful woman of God that she was. She was so very encouraging and so very sweet every time I was able to be in her presence. Uh, Dad Taylor, as it has already been echoed, what a phenomenal man. What a phenomenal father, grandfather, and friend that you were not only to Gammy, but also to the community and to your family. So we honor you and we celebrate you as well today. Can we give him a standing ovation? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
We know that this is a very tough day for the family and for the children, but I believe that I'd be safe to say not tougher than anyone, but for him. Amen. After 63 years, that's a long time to love and to be a friend, uh, a father, and to build a life together. So we celebrate you. Um, to Sister Annette, we love you so very much. Uh, to all of the family, uh, your mother left such a beautiful legacy. And you all, as the, as the seasoned saints used to tell us, you come from good stock. Hallelujah, you come from good stock. And I know that she would want you to continue to pay that forward in the earth. Uh, we are so grateful and honored to be able to have the Newsoms at the Light Church. And that is the way that we were able to encounter these two beautiful people of God. So you know that Pastor and I, we love you. Your Light Church family, we are praying, we are interceding. And you don't have to wait for us to, for, to call because you know we're going to call y'all what you need, right? That's what family does. So I know that she knows that you're in good hands, and we're going to continue to love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. All right. God bless you. I'm going to give it over to Pastor at this time. Listen, we just love this family. Um, some we love close, uh, Derricka, Cam, Courtney. Some we love from a distance, but we love this entire family. Uh, Mom Taylor, we love you. Um, Dad, we love you. I made up my mind today, I just made it up, that I want to be like you. I want to be like you. Yeah. I want to love my wife the way you love your wife. And I want to see 63 plus years. You have inspired me to even want to be. I thought I was a good husband already. Yeah, I thought I was a good husband already. I said I thought I was a good husband already. Yeah, but, but Dad Taylor, I got to step my game up, Dad. I got. I gotta step, I gotta step my game up. So thank you. All of these, you know, I am a fan. I love my, my sister, but I'm a fan of men. And to see the men in the family that you have laid the example for, what a blessing. Masculine men, manly men, amen. Thank you so much. Come on, that's worth a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, you know, right now we are 27 years. We got a way to go, but I'm gonna make 63 if the Lord allows me to. I'm gonna make six, huh? We gonna make 63 because that, and then another thing, amen. Your name is, your first name is Robert, just like mine. See, we, we, we in the vein, we are in the vein. We are in the vein. I'm going, listen, from this moment forward, you're going to be my, my pop. You're going to be my pop. Amen. So we love you so much. Thank you for being such an example. We are praying for the entire family. They don't know it yet. But, you know, this entire family is like church members. They, they, don't, they don't know it yet, but all y'all are like church members. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 all y'all are like church members. <laughs> but listen, we love you. Mom Taylor, we love you. And thank God for you. Courtney, we're praying. We're praying. Cam, we love you. Amen. All of the family, we thank God for you. Come on, if you love the Lord, come on and give the Lord some praise. Amen. said, excuse, because she had on pants. I said, that don't matter here. As long as you got the right heart, that's all we look at. And so it don't matter. We thank God. But let me, let me, let me tell y'all something. 
Pastor Tucker, don't be coming over here adopting members. <laughs> Talking about y'all all part of our church. <laughs> he, he just pulling on my leg. <laughs> Don't, don't be adopting, folk. Don't be talking about your name is Robert and my name is Robert. <laughs> he, he belongs to us. He belongs. Now, 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 Malcolm, you don't have nothing to say. <laughs> Praise God. Look, you need to learn how to laugh sometimes. Know how to laugh. Stop being so doggone serious. Sister Taylor will laugh. Come on, y'all. We all that God gives us joy, even in the midst of sorrow. And so I want you to know this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Is there anybody in here that has some joy? Joy. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Minister Berika, you coming? Did I say your name wrong? How you say your name? I still gonna mess it up. Where's your, where's your mama? Yeah, right there. She used to be my member. I, I didn't ask you that. She was my member. <laughs> When I passed it in Buffalo, that would be 30 years ago, we getting old. She was there, she was a little baby. Lord have mercy. I guess I better go get in my wheelchair. And just roll. <laughs> I got that old. Derica Newsom. thank you. <laughs> But as Pastor Hardaway shared, we have joy. We are sad, we are sorrowful because we have lost our Gammy, but we are joyful because she lived almost 89 years. 89, that is a blessing. Tomorrow would have been her birthday. And I'm not, I'm, I'm on my way, but I want to see 89 plus years. You know what? Amen, amen. <laughs> I am going to be reading the obituary and some acknowledgments. Um, so if you'd like to follow along, the homegoing celebration for Valerie L. Taylor. Sunrise, April 7th, 1934. Sunset, March 29th, 2023. The life and legacy of Valerie L. Taylor. Valerie Lorraine Taylor, affectionately known as Gammy, as you all have heard, to those who loved her dearly, was born on April 7, 1934, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, to Chauncey and Eunice Dawson. Valerie had four siblings, the late Leroy Dawson, the late Maxine Modesty, Marlene Dawson, and Barbara Maxwell. Valerie completed her earthly assignment on March 29th, 2023 with her loving and dedicated husband, Robert, by her side. Valerie attended school in Toronto, Canada. She was united in holy matrimony to Robert W. Taylor for 63 loving years. And from this union, they had one daughter, Annette L. Taylor Newsom Huggins. Together, Valerie and Robert took care of their family, created many memories, traveling with family, and enjoying time with their grandsons, Cameron, Courtney Sr., and Ty Sr., and some more, as we've heard. <laughs> For many years, Valerie had, was a faithful member at Trinity Baptist Church, where she enjoyed working in the kitchen. Valerie was honored on Women's Day 2022 by her fellow congregation members and family present. Valerie was a longtime dedicated member to the Frontier Chapter Number 21, Prince Hall Order Eastern Star. And Valerie loved her date nights twice a week with her husband to the Seneca Niagara Casino. That's one of the secrets, y'all. She also loved spending time in her garden. <laughs> she also loved spending time in her garden as well as spending time with her qu quality time with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. 
Valerie was preceded in death by her father, Chauncey Dawson, her mother, Eunice Dawson, brother, Leroy Dawson, her sister, Maxine Modesty, son-in-law, John Tony Newsom, her brothers-in-law, Ken Modesty, Lewis Taylor, Nathan Taylor, Jack Taylor, and Willie Church, and sisters-in-law, Dolores Dawson and Betty Church. Valerie leaves to cherish her memory, her caring and loving husband of 63 years, Robert W. Taylor, her daughter, Annette David Huggins, her sisters, Marlene Dawson and Barbara Maxwell, her grandchildren, Cameron Newsom, Courtney Derricka Newsom Sr., Ty Newsom Sr., Keisha, Sheena, and many, many more. Her great-grandchildren, Naomi and Jordan, Samara, Michaela, Cameron, Courtney Jr., Ty Jr., and Carter, and a special daughter, Bonnie Mallory, along with a host of nieces, nephews, relatives, and friends. To my lovely wife, the first time I saw your face was upstairs in the dance hall in Toronto. It was the most beautiful face I had ever seen and the happiest moment of my life. I want to thank you for the continuation of all the love that you have given. And I thank God for your sharing your love with me throughout all these years. I thank God for our marriage of 63 years. And from that marriage, we gained a wonderful daughter. And from that, three amazing grandsons who gave us beautiful great-grandchildren, all of which you were so proud of and in love with. You not only shared your love with me, you shared it with all that you came in contact with. From your fellow church members to the members of your organizations and clubs you were involved in. Everyone you came in contact with were show, was shown love and respect, and I'm grateful to have shared that with you. You lived a good life. You kept the faith. You did everything to your ability that God assigned you to do. You worked hard as you traveled through life so that others could gain something from your experiences. So go home, take your rest. I love you, but God loves you best. Robert. At this time, we will have a special presentation from Frontier chapter number 21, Prince Hall, Order Eastern Star. Frontier chapter number 21, Prince Hall, Order Eastern Star, Resolution. Whereas God in his wise providence and infinite wisdom called home our beloved member, Sister Valerie Taylor, from her labors on earth to the everlasting happiness on March 29, 2023. Whereas Sister Taylor was initiated into Frontier chapter February 1983 and served all points and wherever needed for 40 years. Whereas we grieve that Sister Valerie Tabor, Taylor, a strong, dependable, and faithful link in our chain, is gone. Be it resolved that we, the officers and members of Frontier Chapter Number 21, shall cherish her memory and friendship and love. We ask our Heavenly Father to comfort her family and many friends. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy placed in the archives of Frontier Chapter Number 21 as a memorial to our devoted member. We thank our Heavenly Father for granting Sister Valerie T Taylor the serenity to accept the things she couldn't change, the courage and compassion to change the things she could, and wisdom to know the difference. Done in deep sorrow, the officer members of Frontier Chapter Number 21, Karen Larry Worthy Matron, Michael Watson Worthy Patron, Yvonne Lassen, Grand Worthy Matron, Paul W. James, Grand Worthy Patron, and attest by Carol Brewer, the Secretary. I have another resolution. Oh, I'm sorry.
official church resolution of respect for Valerie Taylor. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountains seem, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll go to all extremes. So if your cross may seem hard to bear and you do not know what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We are in place in this world for a limited time, and with the infant's breath begins the race to the grave, a race everyone must run. Now death has come to one of our beloved members. On March 29, 2023, our dear sister was called home to be with the Lord. Whereas in the providence of God, he has ended the life of our sister Valerie Taylor. Pastor Jimmy Hardaway Jr., Reverend Karen Anderson Hardaway, and the officers and members of Trinity Baptist Church of Niagara Falls, New York, feel that it is befitting to express their sympathy to the family. We commend you to him who knows best and will always do right. You have our sincere prayers. Whereas during the many years that Sister Taylor was at Trinity, she was a very devoted and faithful member. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrow to you through the years. But start bravely with a gallant smile and for my sake and in my name, live on and do all the things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and cheer, and I in turn will comfort you and hold you near. And never, never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you in the sky. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your grief. More importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly stated on the sixth day of April, 2023, the pastor and members of the Trinity Baptist Church, Niagara Falls, New York. Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me, I will be okay. Heaven is my home now and this is where I'll stay. Don't cry for me, I'm where I belong. I want you to be happy and try to stay strong. Don't cry for me, it was just my time, but I will see you someday on the other side. Don't cry for me, I am not alone. The angels are with me to welcome me home. Don't cry for me, for I have no fear. All my pain is gone and Jesus took my tears. Don't cry for me, this is not the end. I'll be waiting for you when we meet again. The family of Valerie Lorraine Taylor would like to thank everyone for their prayers and acts of kindness. Your love shown during this difficult time, sorry, has been greatly appreciated. We give special thanks to Trinity Baptist Church and the Frontier Chapter Number 21 Prince Hall Order Eastern Star. Malcolm Wilson will come with their selection. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're just grateful for this service on today. We're grateful for this opportunity to just to be in this position of servitude to the family. We want to know the family that we love you. We thank God for you. We thank God for just the hand of the Lord on your lives and how God has just been so instrumental to so many people here um, in this room today. I just want to say to the Taylor family that we love you. Mr. Taylor knows how great of a man and inspiration he's been in my life. Um, you know, our family have always been very close um, to the Taylor family going back to the days of spending numerous amounts of gatherings, holiday gatherings over at, on Michigan Avenue, 1819 Michigan Avenue at the Harris home. And 
you know, Mr. Taylor would always come over and they couldn't wait to get over there with Carla and Gina and tell jokes. And they would tell jokes and they would talk about everybody's dish that was on the table. And I never forget he, they was laughing and joking and there was a banana pudding on the table. And they said, oh, we're gonna need a straw to eat that banana pudding. Little did they know Mama Wilson made that banana pudding and she was sitting right over there. Look at Mama. But uh, anyway, just good times, good times. And I later remember him um, telling me that I was going to be a Boy Scout. And I said, okay. And they told me I was going to be a Boy Scout. And it turned out to be a very interesting situation, praise the Lord. Amen. Got into a little fight while we was out camping, but God is good, amen. Mr. Taylor had to drive all the way out there to come get Malcolm because he had beat the people up. I never made the height requirement to be a tailor, but I'm grateful that they always, amen, bless me to be part of the family. And we love them today. Hold your microphone straight up. Amen. So Marquise didn't make it either. I understand Marquise. We, yeah, we understand. So um, but we're just going to sing this song of praise to uh, the Taylor and Newsom family. It's requested by the family. And we're going to try to get through this in Jesus' name. And it just simply says, Lord, I lift mine eyes to the hills, knowing my, that all my help comes from you know this family keep looking to the Lord keep looking to him for strength and for the ability to make it and he'll help you every step of the way we love you hallelujah
Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come before your people. Give us your word. Give us a fresh word. Let us hear from you, O oh God. We need you. We need you. But I serve a God that's able to keep us when we couldn't even keep ourselves. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. We are grateful to God for this opportunity. Thank Elder Malcolm Wilson and company for the songs. We thank God for those who have participated in the service. We thank God for this family. Brother Taylor, to Sister Annette and to grandsons, family. God is still good. I said, God is still good. God is still good. And so, in the midst of this all, I still give him the praise. This is um, kind of... Is, is, you wouldn't understand it's difficult if you haven't been put in that place. And um, this is my, I think my second eulogy since my mom. And so I stand here and then I have overwhelming feelings. But God who helped me then will help me right now. And so, we trust him. Can I say this, that y'all just took all my words, everything I wanted to say. Y'all just said everything. Y'all told stories that I ain't never heard. Brother Taylor, you never told me about a restaurant. You, 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 you told me about your golfing and how you've golfed with some famous folks. You told me that. He told me how you went to Toronto yeah. to find you a wife. <laughs> found you a good wife. All the way in Canada. <laughs> Did y'all hear what he said? God works in mysterious way. There ain't nothing mysterious about that. You knew what you wanted. You got what you wanted, and that's what it's all about. And so we give God the praise. Brother Taylor and Sister Taylor, it's going to be kind of strange because, like I said, every time you see Brother Taylor, you saw Sister Taylor. Brother Taylor would be down here on Saturdays cleaning the church, and Sister Taylor would be somewhere just sitting down. And if he went downstairs, he took her downstairs. And she told on him, I think that day that um, we were honoring her when you were here, and he told her that, um, come on, let's walk down the stairs. And she said, I want to get on the stair thing, on the chair. He said, you always walk down and Annette was there. She said, I want to get in the chair. And guess what she did? She got in a chair. Amen. I don't know who was stubborn more, you or her. You was the boss. At least that's what she let you think. <laughs> you were the boss. You was the man. I give you much respect 
for loving your wife. Much respect because she loved you. She loved you with all her whole heart, mind, and soul. And um, I said this at um, my mom's funeral because they were married 63 years. And I'm saying it to you all that some folks don't last 63 hours. 63 years. 63 years. And that says a lot. Because you know sometimes Brother Taylor can get on your nerves. <laughs> and that <laughs> but she just kept on smiling. Well, Taylor, no. Let me tell y'all, um, your daughter-in-law talking about it's a secret about the casino. It was not a secret here. Brother Taylor would take us to dinner at the casino, and it was like he was the mayor of the casino. <laughs> I mean, y'all, y'all laughing? But I, I swear that we would walk in a restaurant. And Brother Taylor, they would just cater. Oh, they hugging him, and they sat him where he wanted to sit and whatever. And it's like the whole casino knew him. <laughs> and see, some of y'all might be judgmental, but I ain't worried about that today. But when you treat people right, they'll treat you right when you show love. They'll show love. And everywhere we went, they were kind to brother and sister Taylor. They accommodated them because of how they were. You don't have to have a big title. You don't have to have a big title. You, 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 you don't have to have a whole lot of folks flocking around you. Just learn how to treat people right. And it makes a difference. You go through Niagara Falls, everybody knows. Brother Taylor, he know it. He know it. Everybody call. People be telling me that they know Brother Taylor. Brother Taylor be like, I don't know if I know him. But, <laughs> but they knew him. And so... Brother Taylor, we're going to miss Sister Taylor, not as much as you. Amen. But I can't come to the house anymore. No, let me say, yeah, I can come to the house, but I can't hear her say, stop showing off. Because he would, during the last period of her life, and we went, and he would try to wake her up to let her know that the pastor was there. And I was like, let her sleep. And she, he woke her up, and he said, pastor here, he says, well, they got another pastor there, because that don't look like the pastor. <laughs> but she did recognize, and he kept the goal of reminding her who she was. Beautiful pictures that were at the house on the wall, at the nursing home. The only question I have is what happened to all that good hair? <laughs> <laughs> Keep living. I mean, if y'all have not seen these pictures, they are beautiful pictures of their wedding and, and beautiful pictures of their love for one another. And so, I, like I said, all of you have said things that need to be said. And what I have always said is that the best eulogy is the life that someone lives. I don't have to make up nothing today. I, I don't have to put somebody in heaven that's already in heaven. You know, people will lie on you while you are living, and they'll lie for you when they die. But we don't have to do that today. And I just want to say, well done, Sister Taylor. <laughs> Thy good and thy Faithful. Did Michael step outside? 
I just want to know how much time I got before we get to the cemetery. Don't go get him. I don't want him. <laughs> I don't want to see him holding up his feet. <laughs> In the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 23 through 27. Thank you, Brother Taylor, for how you treated, Sister Taylor, for how you've treated me and my wife. That means so much to us. And we thank you for your love. Thank you. Job 19, 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. That they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at that latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroyed this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed with him. I want to talk a few minutes from the subject, Valerie's hope. Valerie's hope. Valerie's hope. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at that latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And I believe that Sister Taylor had that hope. She had the hope. She had that belief. And she had that joy. We still remembering a few months ago when she was able to come to church before she, she had fell, how the choir was singing, and she came marching in like she's on the battlefield for our Lord. And she walked in dancing with joy on that Sunday morning, which is beautiful, it's wonderful, because some of us come to church and we act like we don't have any joy. We can't give God the praise. And every time you get the opportunity, you ought to give God some praise. Every time. There's, there's, not, there's not an excuse for any time. But every time, give God the praise. In this book, chapter of Job, that may have been his darkest hour, we actually find the greatest of Job revealed. When I think of this book and I think of Job and what he had gone through and I think about the things that Sister Taylor gone through in this latter part of her life, it reminds me that she had a promise, a promise that no one could take from her. A promise that God had given her. Just as Job in the darkest hour of his life at a time when all earthly hope seemed to have left him. And by the time we look at Job at Job's house, we discover that many things have what seemingly have gone wrong. He lost all of his earthly goods. His own wife had given up hope. His body became the recipient of continued sores and pains. His relatives and his friends who had comforted him tormented his soul with a philosophy that placed the finger of guilt upon Job, blaming him for his own suffering. But in the midst of it all, while everything was going on, Job was able to depend on the hope of the resurrection. Job, my brothers and sisters, had a faith in a future life. It was a true measure of Job's endurance in spite of his suffering, his physical, his mental, and even his soul torture. Can I say to you, a childlike faith in the goodness of the Lord braced him against all adversities that he was going through. The faith that he had was able to keep him in the midst of trying times. 
Notice here the language used which reveals his trust in the Almighty. Job chapter 13 verse 15 said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though I'm going through some things, yet I'm going to keep my trust in God. I want to know, is there anybody here that you've gone through some things in your life and you didn't have nobody but Jesus? Maybe you haven't gone through some things, but keep on living. You're going to go through some things in your life and you're going to discover that your hope is in Jesus who is able to keep you when nobody else can. Job says, though he slayed me, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. And Sister Taylor, in the midst of her illnesses and in the midst of everything that was going on, she yet held on to faith. Even when she might not have remembered some things, when she would come to church and hear the things that were going on, something happened because that's how the Holy Ghost works. The Holy Ghost will bring you back to remembrance. I wish I had some witnesses here of the goodness of the Lord. And Job says in chapter 2, verse 10, what, what, shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? And all this Job, Job did not sin with his lips. He never cursed God. He never gave up on God. He never turned his back on God, but he trusted God in everything. I want you to remember, and I know we don't have much time, we want you to remember that faith in a future life has been the secret of the endurance of all saints in all ages. Hebrews 11, chapter 24, verse 26 says, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. And I don't know about anybody here, but today I thank God that I have a promise of a reward that's in store for me. I, I may not see it all right now, but the Lord told me that if I hold on and hold out, that there is greater waiting for me. Is there anybody here to know that you got greater? Come on and help me somebody here. Anybody here know that I've got greater, I have greater waiting for me. That, that one of these days, when it's all over down here, there's going to be greater waiting for me. Genesis chapter 50, 24 through 25, tells us how Joseph had his brother's promise to take his bones to the promised land because he believed in the resurrection. And I want to let you know that there were many saints who refused deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. So many of us, we give up on life and we like to revert back to what we used to do and how we used to live and what we used to say. But Job never ever gave up on God, but he continued to trust in God. And he said without any doubt and without any regret that, 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 that though he slayed me, though he slayed me, though. Though I go through some things in my life, though I have some ups and some downs, though I go in and out of the hospital and see doctors and they, 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 they're not doing what I want to do, though he slayed me, yet I'm going to trust in him. Why, why are you going to trust in him? Because let me tell somebody here, can't nobody, I done left my notes already, can do me like Jesus can. Is there anybody here that knows today that, that, that you can have all the friends in the world, you can have all the family in the world, but nobody, help me Jesus, will do you like Jesus. Somebody said he's my friend. He's my mother when I'm motherless. He's my father when I'm fatherless. He's my everything. I wish I had some witnesses here. He is my hope for tomorrow. He's my joy in the midst of sorrow. He is everything. Can nobody. 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 
can't nobody do me like Jesus. I love my wife. She's the best thing that ever happened to me. But can I let somebody know that when it comes to Jesus, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And she understands, she understands that Jesus first. And when you got Jesus first, he'll work everything else out. Put everything in order. Can I get some witnesses here? Have Jesus first in your life. Ah, I open the text reveals how close. Let me get through this. How clear the truth was to this man, Job. Note these inspired statements by that man of faith. He wished that, that his testimony of his faith in the resurrection would endure throughout all ages. He says, all that my words were now written, all that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock in an iron pen lead, that they would last forever, that they would last for generation to generation, that I can leave something that somebody else can see, that my testimony won't fade away, but that somebody would get hope from my testimony. I want y'all to know, Brother Taylor, that I've got some faith from what Sister Taylor lived through. She lived through some things that have left them ingrained in my heart and in my mind. I wish I had somebody. When you meet somebody like that, you can never, ever forget who they are. You just... Why was he so anxious that his testimony about his faith in God in the resurrection of the dead? Uh, he knew that untold sufferers would go through the similar experience. Some of us are going, are going to go through this. Don't, don't act like you won't be here one day. <laughs> if, you, if you live long enough, you're going to be here as well. You're going to be sitting on the front row somewhere. I wish I had somebody. But, 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 but let's not forget that, that the Lord promised that he would never leave you, never forsake you. Can I get a witness here? So Job knew that others would have this similar experience. Two, he needed his faith to, to overcome and to be comforted. He knew that the best thing that he had was faith. Now I know that a lot of us like to have money. We like to have cars. Uh, come on and help me somebody. I, I got a text from, I don't know what Apple was talking about what the lotto was going to be last night. And I I almost went. <laughs> now, see, didn't here go these holy folks. Come on, Reverend. Open the lotto. Because if I won, yeah. I'm gonna be like the rest of y'all. I'm gonna pay my tithes. <laughs> First, First the, the other things in this world that we desire, but the best thing I have is my faith is my faith. My faith keeps me. I wish I had somebody when I couldn't keep myself. I've gone through some things and if it wasn't for faith, I'd probably be dead like some other folks have been. But I was determined to trust in God. I was determined to hold on to what I got. You may not think it's not enough, but it was enough for me. He knew that when all earthly comfort fades away, that the hope of a better life and a better world would ease the pain and the suffering, light up the hope of the future. And know how clear and distinct was his vision of the future of God's children. He very simply says, I know. I know. There's something that you got to know for yourself. There's some things that mama and daddy can't do for you. There's some things that grandma can't do for you. There's some things that your friends can't do. Sometimes you got to know for your own self where you going, where you are on your way to. Job says, I know. I didn't hear it from somebody else. It's what I've experienced in my own life. I know that my redeemer lives. My God's not dead. This, this Holy Week, y'all, my God's not dead. I wish I had some witnesses here. To all the skeptics that want to tell me he's dead, my God is not dead. He is still alive. I wish I had somebody here one Sunday morning. Good God, early in the morning, 
He got up from the grave with. Y'all, y'all, y'all. He got up with all power. In his hand, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were able to face the wrath of a deluded king because they had the faith. They, that, that knowledge enabled them to face that wrath. That knowledge enabled Daniel to exclaim, Yea, though I walk, I'm sorry, David, to exclaim, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Can I get a witness? Though a hope should encamp against me, and my heart shall not fear, though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. I wish I had a witness here. One thing, one thing I desire of the Lord. Y'all not gonna help me today. One thing. I wish I had a witness that I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Y'all didn't hear me in ever and ever. Y'all still missed it in ever and ever. Can I get a witness? I mind firmly, I stayed on the God of our hope in the promise of the resurrection of the dead. Do I have a witness that will light up our lives even when the shadow of sickness comes and death surrounds our bed will enable us to endure the pain and to keep the suffering that we may have to endure for just a moment. I wish I had a witness. Brother Taylor, she was sick just for a moment. She was going through just for a moment. She had ups and downs just for a moment. You cried some tears, but it's just for a moment. Do I have a witness here? It's just for a moment. So in this hour, can I give you some comfort? In this hour of death, when a loved one is taken from us, Dear one, can you say that I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at that latter day oh, upon the earth? Can I get a witness? I believe that Sister Taylor had an understanding with the Lord. And can I tell somebody here, you want to have an understanding with the Lord. You want to make sure that your soul is right. Can I get a witness? And I can see her saying that I have a testimony. For God I'll live and for God I'll die. Can I get a witness? So can I close this song by asking the stranger in the room, Oh death, where is your stay? Oh grave, where is your victory? Can I get a witness? Death, you tried to sneak your way in and take our loved one, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus that took our sister and I heard him saying that I am the resurrection and I am what he worried about it, the light and he that believeth in me should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't know about y'all, but one of these old days, I'm going to see her again, but when I see her, I'm trying to see Jesus, because I want to hear him say, well done, well done, thy good and faithful.
faithful servant is there anybody here are you waiting to hear the Lord say well done yeah yeah ah! well done I wish I was on Sunday morning y'all can I tell y'all that one of these days I'm going to see Jesus for myself all my trials all my pain all of my toils will be over I'm going to a better place where every day is Sunday Sabbath will have no end I'm going to a better place I'm going to a better place Can I ask one more question? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, thing is, can I say this, my late Pastor Baines used to say this, that they can't crown him Lord of Lords until I get there. Until you get there. Make sure that you have your right mind, your might, your spirit, your soul is in agreement with the Lord. Tomorrow's not promise. Tomorrow's not promise. Death comes just like that. I hate death. But guess what? I'm never afraid. Because I'm never alone. Never alone. As long as you have the Lord with you. Brother Taylor, you'll see her again. You'll see her again. Y'all can do whatever dance y'all used to do. Because I know you can dance. I haven't seen you dance. Oh, yeah, you can go. Uh, you probably play basketball better than me too because I can't dance or do that one. <laughs> but guess what guess what she's just getting it ready for you and when you get there you'll see her again but a host a cloud of witnesses but you'll see Jesus and when you see him everything will be alright God bless your hearts Williamson Funeral Home will come at this time. Bless God.
Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We pray that as we leave this place and we make our way to the burial grounds, that you be with this family. Go with them. Wrap your arms of comfort and love. We give you the praise. My God, my God, my God, my God. We give you the praise in the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And just to the family and friends, the final prayers and committal service will take place here at Oakwood Cemetery in Niagara Falls, New York. For those of you who will be following us, I ask that you would turn your blinkers and flashes on, bright lights. I ask that my pallbearers please come forth to my immediate right. Everyone else stand. Thank you. Bye. 
oh we in Ada, hallelujah by him, 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 ah, fly away. 